Good evening, everyone. Frosty Hots here. Seems a little different behind me. Some uh, temporary moves going on, but nonetheless, happy Sunday. Good evening. Good afternoon. I am excited for this division game, Storm League division game. We are about to be ready here. Coming with Team Backdoor versus Anti Clown Association. Both well notable teams, as you guys will see in just a second. We'll be heading into Matt Vance E immediately. You will recognize these names. High, high tier players. And I am excited to be your host today. So, as we are waiting for the to go here, I would also like to say thank you, Nano Hots, for the host here, or for the raid here of 24. Thank you, thank you. Hope you had a great stream. Hope you guys are enjoy. Uh, this uh, high level play today that we are having so in the meantime uh, let's talk about these bands here that we got going on here um, so we had team backdoor selecting cursed hollow and all tracks pass and then guard of terror and Ch um, shrine temple excuse me for over there for aca and with aca getting the first pick for dragonshire and let me tell you something i am a big big fan of Dragonshire. It's one of my favorite maps on this game, not gonna lie, when I mean, I'm st still a Ready pleb. Ready to have a little fun? But, you know, as I'm still a pleb and everything, this map is so much fun, and as you grow and you play more and more, you see um, types of characters you get to play, and all the types of strats. Like, you can take, for example, top bruisers, shove in top uh, with your off laner, or obviously both parties take both camps. You have a bush gank going up to rotations. There's just so much you can do, right? So much to talk about, right? So I am extremely excited. Uh, we are still waiting. One team is currently not ready. Um, but nonetheless, guys, I I can't say it enough. Say? I am excited for this. All right. In the meantime here, we'll go back to the pregame here so you can guys see my wonderful forehead and face here. Thank you guys everyone for the follow or for the follow here of the channel. How you doing, Banky? I saw your uh I saw your um your cast. You're doing wonderful. Love the game, Archon looking strong there. So as we were waiting, let me get a little bit of background music too here, because I thought we were actually about to just jump on in. Let's see here. There we go. I like a little good background music too. I don't know about you guys, but I like a good background music. How we looking here? Oh, okay, they're starting now. Of course, right? Of course. <laughs> All right, here we go. Dragonshire starting up here. Let's get into the draft here. Blue team getting the first ban here. So talking strats wise, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, when it comes to when it comes to team comps and whatnot, I'm in the um, in the darkest spot with this for them, right? I haven't, I didn't get a chance to take a quick look at what we got here, but we have a Rexar ban, pretty standard here on Dragonshire. You do not want to deal with Misha on the point. Rexar, especially in the good hands, and I believe that was for Valimar. Uh, Valimar playing, I, I believe the offlaner Valimar. It's just for all I'm remembering. Spicy offlaner shows us some good work here. Again, I could be wrong. Again, correct me here. So Carbon over here, the Li Ming God himself. Crazy, crazy world, right? Oh, awesome there, Banky. So let's see. We have a Zagara ban. As I've seen lately, Zagara is pretty OP, um, but does have her flaws when it comes to, like, you know, Genji and Illini. You just don't want to deal with it. Just so much damage. She can shoot you from a mile away now, doing so much damage here. But it looks like we're getting a target on the off laner here on Dragon Shower. And now we're following up with the Junkrat ban here. Um, maybe preferably towards that's a carbon ban or you know obviously with their comp they don't want to deal with traps and disruptions on rotations getting vision and whatnot so let's see what the first prio is going to be over on the side of team back door here is it going to be the assassin uh, the tank the healer maybe like a bright wing you know again i'm definitely in the shadow room here so we do get heavy on the bright wing here bright wing looking good this i mean actually these previous seasons the too huge begins. fan of that thank you so much mcgiblets for the subscription thank you thank you here we go so now we have the two picks coming over for the side of aca let's see what they have in store for us what is the strat here do we see an anna do we see a malfurion to deal with the bright wing later so we get the sylvanas from kelsey here and then we get the Stukov. Awesome. So Valimar going in. Oh, yeah, that's right. Valimar is a healer now. <laughs> Excuse me on that, guys. Awesome. So now we get nice follow-up with the Stukov. And Stukov is overall pretty scary, in my opinion. Top, Definitely one of the top three healers in the meta. 
So are we gonna get a follow up with tank and assassin I'm feeling here? Obviously pick your off lane last unless we get something out of the ordinary, like they wanna counter take an off lane off the map. So we get Tychus, is this gonna be a potential blow up comp? Okay, so the Anubarak, they do not want the Tychus to be taken by the other team into Anubarak. And with the double stuns plus late game, you get four stun chains. Tychus is a well, massacre with the stun lock comp. But the thing is with Stukov is whoever the target is, potentially, if not cocooned, uh, could get silenced out of that. So that is for thought. All right, here we go for the last ban here. Here we go, Falstad doesn't want to get cocooned to isolate target and gust it away and let alone just for the macro game itself. So last and not least for the final ban on the side of Team Backdoor here. Let's see what they prioritize here. They get rid of the Chromie. Chromie getting rid from Got Filth, I believe here. It's pretty annoying when it comes onto that level eight talent spike here to get her alt here. Um, either you get time loop or uh, slowing sands super annoying especially for a new rag when they fully commit and for tychus since he has a close aa range so let's see your tank and last assassin should be coming up here letting their off laner pick last so here's the may and dahaka i was wrong yet again here i am look at me assuming i am wrong but i love love seeing dahakas super good uh, and I wonder if we're going to get the Force Armor build, you know, the W build here, you know, or, you know, I still like the Zoomy race car here, but man, that Force Armor build is amazing, especially, especially when you're feeling like a memer and you're tanking the whole team with your tank, you get three lives, my God, you're doing amazing. So let's see what the last two picks are for the side of Team Backdoor. We get Blaze, Liam, and Carbon on my Ev here. And let's see what Got Filth has for us tonight here. So let's see if Sylvanas maybe looking at a mage pick here. We'll see here. Um, maybe something for rotations, but you also have a Dahaka. So let's see. Fits their drop. Honestly, I, I will say personally, I hope the Goddess see a Hanzo game because your boy needs some tips and notes on that. So, oh, I, my God, I can take notes as I was just saying here. <laughs> awesome got filth is here in me tonight i like it all right everybody so this is going to be game number one for the storm division for team for team backdoor versus aca i am excited i hope you guys are excited we're gonna have an excellent time tonight and as a caster i always say i hope we get five games since this is the best of five here but good luck to both teams here <laughs> hell yeah this is what we like to see man I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to end game here. Man, this is some good stuff here, guys. Oh, Kelsey is on it. They switched. They 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 scammed me. Doesn't matter. We still get a Hanzo game. I don't care. We still get it. That's all that matters, right? I'm see. I'm excited to see a dragon arrow, or or do we get the spicy dragon strike? Right. All right, everybody. Let's introduce both teams as we always do. So we're going to introduce <clears throat> the blue team over here. Looking over for the side of team back door. We have Carbon on my Ev, Liam on Blaze, Jachuggy on Anubarak, Unaverted on Tychus, and Brightwing being played by Heavy. Now for the side of ACA, we have Kelsier on Hanzo, Caesar Salad on May, Got Filth on Sylvanas, Valimar on Stukov, and last but not least, Duda Bytus on Dahaka. And if I butchered your name due to Bytus, I apologize. So here we go. We're lining up mid. Sylvanas looking like she's going to go bottom. Or up the bat. Maybe play for a Fort Tower Wall. Um, or the Tower. The Cannon Shots down there. And then here we go. Kelsier lining up some shots here. I'm assuming this is a W build. Yep, it is. Looking for the 4v5. Potentially also slowing down rotation, right? Because Sylv was potentially down there looking for something spicy here. But here comes Caesar Salad looking for the minion waves here. Just wanted to catch the wave. And here we go. Here's how we start the foot race here. We're going to start rotating down. But Anubrak and Liam are looking for a team like a team stun comp onto the dude Abitus to slow down rotation here. But here comes May slowing down everything. Maev has to use her trait to get out. And Caesar Salad committing in to slow her down. 
I agree, Grace. Dragon Strike would be pretty pog here. Kelsey, you're getting some side XP off side. Kind of clear the wave again. You want to take your rotations as needed. Kelsey, you're poking into the unaverted here on Tychus and since he has way more range here and here we go one minute is here got filth is starting the camp who's going to start it first or are they going to start bruisers first to put pressure up top so carbon is immediately starting bruisers which i am a big fan of because taking bruisers in the middle of a shrine wave on the first objective does a lot for your off laner but here we go we have your siege camp pushing down bottom and you have two in mid so they know that they're the only ones down bottom at the moment here we go my ev and blaze they don't see the my ev yet they're just putting a lot of pressure here nudibitis is calling this out and he's getting away he needs to just back off which he will nice tunnel here and here comes got filth coming up to support this they don't need the side of aca they need to mitigate the damage on this so they're sending two top and putting kelsier down bottom with a siege camp here now you have a four man on both sides coming in, trying to apply pressure. Carbon hitting the Sylvanas here, but nice catch by Maev, pulling out Godfilth. Godfilth is getting saved by the Sans, but is it enough? No, it should be Carbon annihilating him, and he is. And Dudabitis trying to stay alive at 700 HP and gets out. Great sounds by Balamor, but Carbon in a new bracket, working off one another with Heavy with a nice poly. Nice setup here. Kelsier winning the 1v1 down here. I even say even health, right? 767 health to 800 around there. Liam going for the mid soak here catching up and as you guys can see team or back team back door here is up ahead in xp off the kill but also they're looking good on the soak here well here we go valimar looking to see if anyone's there but valimar you get stunned out my ev holding on doesn't need to fully commit right they stun they're gonna take down bottom heavy taking it and healing up unaverted slowly so God Filth committing in pretty aggressively, but can they kill Unaverted here? They're feeling pretty confident about that. Ooh, Kelsier getting really close. Carbon committing in. And this is a play. It's the heyday for Kelsier. Can he get some more stacks here? We're looking at four stacks. Nice. Gets two more. Nice clear here. Blaze now pushing up the top fort here while Dehawk is trying to rotate. And they're going to start immediately on the Bruiser camps here. Here we go. ACA taking the bottom bruisers while back team back door are going to be taking their siege camp to help mitigate. And if you guys didn't know here, your siege camp actually takes out the bruiser camps, especially if it's behind your minion wave. You can defend, your siege camp can defend the bruiser uh, bruiser camp. But here we go. Got filth on Sylph taking down the towers here. This is what you want to see. You trade Kelsier getting the final shot on the four shot here. But oh, big hit onto Brightwing here, getting Kelsier up to 10 stacks here. We see Blaze and Dahaka holding it mid, but here comes all the action. Jachuggy having the pre tap here. A nice silence and and snow by may here and here comes the chuggy looking in potentially looking for an aggressive play my head coming in but here comes a spread out by caesar salad and got phil they're spreading out but here comes a target on sylvanas so they're looking can they get him but nice and stoppable by sylvanas here looking proactively getting out of that caesar salad committing in clearing the wave here but they're playing for their shrine here and you know liam's not gonna give the daka the <laughs> shrine here but nice try here comes got phil playing again on his unstoppable wave and here we are, Kelsier at 14 stacks. Shrine or bottom siege is up, but Dahaka is lurking around. Does the Blaze sense it out? Here it comes. Here comes a 5v4. Carbon is isolated potentially by himself, but they do it put a lot of damage onto the Dahaka here. But they get Carbon. They annihilate Carbon. It's not 5v4, but Liam is top getting the soak here. But again, guys, look at the soak difference here. With Liam taking top and controlling, you know, it's getting pretty close, right? It's getting it's getting close to 10 for them. But they sort of caught up on the side of ACI. They take their midway, but here comes Got Filth and Caesar Salad. They're going to be pushing down the wall here. Nice stun by the Anubarak here on the Sylvanas here. Trait is about to fall, so there's no more trait. They got some good chip damage, but they may want more here as they're putting a lot of pressure. Blaze is potentially looking for a flank here because the side of ACA is a bit overextended. Stukov might be the target, but they may hit the Sylvanas instead. Valimar should fall here. And here comes a ping over towards Scott Filth. Does Scott Filth have his uh, unstoppable? But here comes a new rack committing in as well. He wants it. And did they now have bottom and top shrine here? 
Here we go. Kelsier looking well. It already finished the simple geometry. I missed that. My apologies there. Nubrak backing for mana. Out of mana here. And here comes the Dehaka. So, again, they will hit 10 first, right? On the side of Team Backdoor. Let's hope. And let's see for the side of Team Backdoor if they can secure this for their sake. But for the sake of ACA, can they defend this and hold off till 10? They're really not that far off from 10. Is there much advantage to take over? Both teams are, or Team ACA is playing safely. The Hockey giving up top, looking for vision or looking for everyone. So everyone has been accounted for. So now they are going to, I die here, Cocoon Cocoon on May, looking for a nice, what do you say? Ready to have great a stuff fun? by Jachuggy for Cocooning the May to stop them from silencing or contesting, I should say, the Maev to get the first Dragonite. So they're going to poke down mid, and they're going to keep chunking at the Dragonite. It's still great to sit, you know, pre-seven minute DK, and they're taking this top actually here. You know, the Dehaka is taking a lot of damage here. Nice stuns and great bunkered by Blaze here. He's taking a lot of damage. He is low, but they're all going to get into the bunker, and they're going to commit the top here. It looks like Blaze really low here, but great kick by Maev to to push away the CC here. So trying to get some damage onto their two. Hardlock CC tanks here. And another kick for the Stukov. Great stuff here by... And then here comes Unaverted poking the back line here. Maev walking away. They got what they wanted. Top four while Brightwing is bottom. But they needed someone to soak bottom, right? And not continuously give up XP. It's a basically over time, if you give that up, you're going to bleed your enemies. So here we go. We immediately see a fight around the Bruiser camp for T-Back Door. But here comes Brightwing Heavy coming up there to heal on Averted here. And they take their camp. And now you're going to see some damage more on the mid fort here. The Haka just kind of lurking about top. Seeing if anyone's going to rotate, maybe stall them. But he's got some work ahead of him. He's got to clear the wave and he's got to clear the Bruiser camp. But as we see bottom still getting caught into the cocoon here. Carbon wanting to commit in. But here comes Dubitis on the Dahaka. Focusing down Carbon but misses the tongue. Oh, Kelsier with the fat W. Chunking my F here. Blaze missing his stun due to his own wall. But got filled super low. Can the Stukov save him? Is it, is it too much? Is it too much damage here? Oh, but Liam missed it. And he lives. And now they're getting punishment on the D Tychus here. But here comes a dragon arrow missing. And not be able to secure it. But it's okay. They got two kills. And now, ooh, Phil got the trade up just in time, I believe. But they get bottom four here, which is really good here on this map. And I'm assuming you guys do know this. But in case you don't, bot four is definitely priority for the map of Dragonshire. Because there is three... Siege, there's two siege camps and one bruiser, so applying a lot of lane pressure over time can bleed out your opponent, punish them, and always apply pressure. So bottom side fort taken for the side of ACA is huge. Now top lane is super annoying because not having it is super annoying because now your Dahaka has to not have you know tap and a safety net. But as a Dahaka, you're also global. So not the end of the world. I'd rather trade top for bottom, right? So here we go, got filth on the bruiser camp here, and they're going to immediately chunk this down, and there's going to be immediate, immediate turnaround. They're going to see if anyone's lurking here. Great idea here. You know, there are teams that will send one guy, you know, particularly the tank, to see if anyone's lurking around, getting vision, right? Scouting, typically your tank. So now as we see here, we have the neutral camp down bottom, which is pretty big, right? You're going to apply pressure while potentially being able to get your bottom shrine here. And here we go, Dahaka is going to take top, get the remainder of the XP, and kind of back off, wait to see what's going on in the map, right? He's He has no vision on some of them. He definitely had vision on Blaze. He knows he's rotating, but now he should see all four, right? So he should be able to step up here. May is the team for the side of ACA should be calling that out. Now we have Tychus rotating mid to make sure that Dahaka is not in a bush because they have no vision on him, and they should be able to catch Soak. But as I was saying earlier, right, ACA was behind the XP, but due to the kills, due to the structures, and due to the amount of XP they've been gaining, they're now caught up. Now actually in the lead for XP. Dahaka is now scouting them out. Almost able to finish the trait. Kelsier trying to scout the mid for Dahaka here. But they have bottom of control, right? So they don't so Dahaka doesn't really need to step up here because the minions are at the top. Uh, at the fort for the side of Team Backdoor. So he's just playing mid, right? Getting vision here. But May potentially getting chucked. But nice blind misses the tongue. And they're trying to commit. Caesar Salas trying to commit onto either Tychus or Nubrak, but misses. Backs off. Potentially looking for a pre-tap for this. It's a pre-16 fight here. Both teams will be 15. Let's see who decides to be more aggressive here. 
Still being left for dry here, has to run away. And here comes Mayette, taking bottom Kelsey or looking to snipe. The, the snipe Carbon here he should be able to get out, but oh, just missing. But is it enough? Oh my god, Carbon with this intuition, the sixth sense. But is it enough? Is it enough for him to stay alive? It isn't, but that looks pretty good. But hey, he did get an alt out from the Sylvanas here. They're now looking at Heavy here. Heavy should be able to get away. But my god, the intuition of Carbon there dodging the dragon, the dragon arrow there. That was pretty good to look at. I won't even lie. Aesthetically, that was pleasing here. But nonetheless, they're now pushing bottom and they're. In the meantime, they are, should be able to kill the hockey here. So they get a counter trade here. But in the meantime, that means two or three were top, actually. And now you get a keep wall and you get some keep damage here, which is big. Trade for trade. So you both lose one, but Carbon will be up first. But Team ACA took advantage of their win down bottom and they pushed this in, which is huge, right? If you get the DK, this is already chunked here. But... Now that the now that on the side of Team Backdoor has reset, you now have a numbers advantage. You could play for the top lane if you are on the side of Team ACA. Leave one bottom, or maybe I'll rotate here, but use your advantage wisely before Dahaka comes up. But as I was saying that, of course, Dahaka's gonna be up, is gonna be ready to dig. And here comes Liam getting chunked here. Nice May wall to kind of isolate here, but misses slightly. Fun. And here comes the Dragon Arrow, hits two, but can they get a lockdown on Anubrak? But Carbon is getting focused here, but the Anubrak does save the Haka here. Dahaka was almost low, but gets cocooned here. And here comes Sil. The Haka is burrowing around, getting his Force Armor. So he did go Force Armor build. Hanzo chunking down the blaze here. Carbon is super low at 900 health, and they're trying to focus down Carbon. They're streaming Carbon, get Carbon, and they doesn't able to get him. Carbon is an elusive Maev here, and Anubrak does get out as well. But nonetheless... They got five, five men are still up for the side of ACA. They win that team fight, and now they're looking to play the DK. And on the side of Team Backdoor, lick your wounds, reset, get your bruiser camp, let that push. Oh, just kidding. They're dancing around top. Great stuff by Anubrak here. Instead of licking wounds, they're going to keep going here, and you can stall for time. Absolutely. That is something that you want here because you have to, there's going to be one rotating from bottom. It's going to be too late, so it's still a 4v4 because Brightwing can come in at any time. They're still stalling. Here comes Carbon poking and poking and poking with his Qs here. Brightwing is now here, healing up the Anubarak here. But in the meantime, Kelsey rotating mid allows him to get the DK. So now they're going to focus down mid or bottom. Tychus is going to look to chunk. And they're just going to push away. So as they're seeing here, they're just kind of poking away at it. You know, for the side of Team Backdoor, this is great for them, right? This is the best case scenario. You know, it's not pushing to your keep. But you're just poking at the wave, right? Is all it's doing is soaking. I mean, you lost the objective, but you're not losing any more structures until until ACA regroups. So you might be looking at mid because they have a Silk trait um, ready to go here. Stukov looking for Liam here. Ooh, nice stuff by Valimar. Looking for a nice route here. But Tychus getting kind of low. May pushing him out. Getting really low. Got chunked here. But Dhaka looking for a side flank here. But Liam... And Anubrak scout him out here. So they should get the mid fort for free, obviously. And so now two forts are down. Side team back door. Anubrak gets punted away, and Kelsier is just going to walk away. Overall, great, great defense by the side of team back door. If you, you know, losing mid there, it's, you don't want to lose forts, but at least you didn't lose your bottom key, right? So I, I, I should say keeps in general. But obviously for the side of Team ACA, you now have an XP lead. Here comes Anubrak running right at the camp here. They want to take this pre-25, but oh my god, Anubrak just gets completely obliterated. Here comes Phil coming in, but ooh, heavy with the cleanse what carbon with the trait. That's what fun. we like to see, but Phil might die here and gets naded last second here. Blaze getting low, couldn't get heavy heals here. And Kels here looking to a nice big chunk here. Heavy trying to keep Liam alive here. And here comes the side of ACA running at uh, uh, Brightwing and Blaze here. But now they're going to take their siege camp here. Carbon poking in, helping out with taking the camp here. But they should be able to get the camp. And they might look aggressively. They're trying to kind of back, but Siege is out. Just trying to poke away. But ooh, this is a fight for the Hanzo, right? Because you have so much wall potential to wall bang them with your scatter arrows here. I don't know. 20's coming up soon. I'm getting excited for this. Level 20 for the side of ACA winning their team fights and DKs. Dahaka back up top here. Looking at siege damage here. Sylvanas leading the pack here for overall. 
So while there's a little stalemate, actually, I kind of want to look at their talents here. So pretty standard for Hanzo. This is pretty standard. Yeah, Polar Vortex. I'm, and I also like looking at these because, yeah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. I knew I saw it, but I love seeing the W build of the Hawk here. And now looking over for side of Team Backdoor, I've noticed lately that the Master Assassin is becoming more popular. If anyone in the chat um, can explain to me why, you know, because I'm still trying to figure that one out due to what you're requiring 15 takedowns, but increase take this. Okay. okay, so basically for the passive here versus, um, versus the quest. The unlimited quest or the uh, immediate chunk. Again, I'm always wanting to learn to see talent choices here. But here we go. Here we are looking for the 2019 here. The Haka holding down bottom. Blaze as well. So they are putting pressure top here. Silph should be using trait. Yep, here comes Bruiser. And they're just applying pressure, right? To using your advantage. But they also know they got to be kind of careful here. To the side of Team Backdoor. They are looking. Oh, but here comes a nice arrow, but there is really no follow-up here. But a new rat coming in with the follow-up onto Caesar Salad. And nice boop away. Carbage should be able to catch him potentially. Caesar Salad locking himself into the side of Team Backdoor. But oh my god, did you see that cocoon get unstoppable by Gottfield? The reaction time on that. Amazing. Stukov trying to get out, slapping them away. Is stuck in the stuck in the Maev cage here. But can he get out? So much damage here, and he should fall. And there is a nuke. And Blaze exterminates him. But here we go. Sylvanas going mid during that fight here. And again, it's very tough when you put yourself in a situation like that. Perfect. So for the Odin attack speed. Thank you. Thank you. See, I'm still learning stuff as well. So thank you guys for that. But still taking the DK away, which is a huge win because after you do lose one of your members. Oh, I thought he got a field goal for a second. But it mitigates the loss of the DK going to the enemy team with the numbers advantage here, right? So Sylph holding on to the DK, not trying to waste and trying to buy time. He has 48 seconds and 54% health, right? And allowing the allowing Valimar to spawn back in without them getting any direct punishment, right? So that means that the side of Team Backdoor is not pushing another lane. So Sylph is just trying to step up, get some vision on their team, making sure that they're not scattered around, potentially even looking for Dahaka, right? And allowing to make sure, again, like the Hawk is not getting rotated on. Kelsey are scouting in with his Ws, getting some damage off and should be able to hit the wave here. Nice wave clear here. And they might look for the side of Team Backdoor's camp here. The Hawk is rotating here. Both teams are here. Is this a make or break point? See the solid ice walling. Nice sidestep by Unaverted here. They take their camp, playing aggressively here and applying pressure consistently down bottom here, right? Continuously applying pressure and you want to continuously do that, especially when you have, you know, the fort missing and you want to keep putting pressure on this keep. Outside of team back door, they are going to take their bruiser camp to keep pushing out the lane, right? They both forts are down, but having the advantage, pushing it out, seeing where Dahaka is at, and applying pressure. So here we go. Dahaka clearing out mid. And Kelsey are looking for a cheeky stun potentially. But also getting vision of course. Making sure that they're safe on rotation. Or seeing if anyone is on rotation for them. Into the side of ACA. So here we go. We're going to see a siege down bottom here. Coming for the side of Team Bagdoor. Putting the wall down. And now we're going to potentially pressure the well here. Great advantage for the side of ACA here right. They can pre-tap and take this fight at any point in time they please. Heavy making sure that they cannot see and they go invisible here, right? Make sure I remember the name here. Ooh, he's just out looking to be a little aggressive here. Trying to poke around, right? Sylvanas in mid, putting some pressure here. And they're sending Tychus here, but do they call it out, right? Ooh, Liam taking that bruiser camp. But here comes Got Filth running away. But great. This is great, right? You got a lot of value, even if it was just this, right? You got... You got the keep, ha I would say more than just half the keep gate, right? That's huge. But now they called that out, so there should be pressure due to this bottom bruiser camp pushing into the fort for the side of ACA. But here's an immediate stun lock here, but stunned comes up by Kelsier, but it isn't enough. There's, sh there's another CC chain here, but Stukov gets cocooned here. Brightwing going on Anubrak here, but here comes Tychus ready to use his Odin, doing so much damage. Oh, Valimar should fall here. Is this... 
Is this the throw? Of a, this might be a throw here. Three are dead. DK options up, but they are going to Siege here, right? You have your Odin still up and healthy. You're pushing, and now you're going to be looking at a keep. This will definitely be a first keep here, but are they going to look to end? That is the question. You have a new Brack. You have two alive. Yeah, I mean, it's 30, 28 seconds here. It's it's looking. Carbon is... Oh, but Brightwing gets caught here. But here comes a new Brack trying to CC chain him. And Kelsey is trying to do a lot of damage here. But nice dig by the Dhaka. They're looking kind of chunked here. But here comes Brightwing. Uh-oh, they're looking for the end here. Inside of ACA, they were in control. But Dhaka is trying to silence and save his keep here. Or save his core here. Excuse me. Kelsey are doing a lot of damage. But sidesteps the... Sidesteps the... Uh, Liam's charge in. But here we go. Here comes May, right? So we're 80% here, 78% here. And <laughs> Doc is doing so much damage to the Psyches here, but they have to get the Blaze off. And here comes Kelsier. Kelsier falls. 56%. Blaze it got into his bunker. They're poking it for free damage here. But May gets cocooned here. Is this enough? Can they do it? They should be able to do it here. 10%. 8-1. It's over. And just like that, ACA was taking control of that, but Team Backdoor did not let that go. And they took it to the house. GG's for the side of Team Backdoor for that win. Excellent stuff for them. So let's look at some stats here, right? Tykes over here at four kills. And again, thank you, chat, for giving me a nice education learning tool here. I wouldn't have thought for that. And again, I'm also a tank main, so you do learn something every day. I love seeing this. Um, you know, I'm not as great as a Brightwing as Heavy is here, but this is awesome, especially for the type of comp that Team ACA is running here. Stats-wise, Hanzo with 79k. Man, that those Ws were insane. The amount of damage he was putting off was nutty. Absolutely nutty. But if you also look at the kills, right? I mean, I'd say relatively, they're relatively close, you know? So. All right. Let's see what we get for game number two here. Let me see. Yep, there's my boy Murky. Go back over to the map band, see what they pick. All right. Guys, though, that was a fantastic game here. Let's look for Carbon. Okay, so they're still waiting to join Lobby. Guys, though, what tell you me your thoughts Ready on that. Ready to have a little fun? On that. That was exciting for that game. You know, the game was so close, right? You know, you felt like ACA was taking so much control, right? And then... You know, all of a sudden they lose one big team fight down bottom late game and then that's it. You know, game's over. That's that is that is the fun of this game. You can be in control the entire game and throw one team fight. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's not even just a throw, but you lose one big team fight, that's it. Alright, so we got Towers of Doom coming up. I'm gonna enter that in. Select it over by Team Backdoor. Towers of Doom. Picked. All right. Man, I'm loving these maps. You know, Towers of Doom's a good one. Dragonshire. You know, speculating-wise, did they ban Infernal? I hope we see an Infernal Shrine map here again. As I was saying, as a caster, I always want to see a five-game series. But obviously, if you're either or a team, you do not. <laughs> you want to just win it as fast as possible. But everyone's in the lobby here, and I will switch over to the draft in just a second. I do agree with you, Retired. Nice end game from Team Backdoor. They they did very well coordinating that, staying in the game, communicating. I mean, the comms were on point, looking good there. But at least I got my Hanzo game. I got to watch that, right? Right. Kelsey is calling ready. I'm ready. Let's see. All right, so one minute over. All right, guys, I'm going to do a brief... Oh, excuse me. So they're going to take a one-minute break for uh, for the side of Team Backdoor. So I'm going to take a quick commercial break for you all, and I'll see you all back shortly.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready going into Towers of Doom game number two here. For anyone coming in, new Storm Le Storm Division here. Team Backdoor taking the win here versus ACA on Dragonshard. ACA was looking pretty, pretty in control, but it's anyone's games, right? When it comes to the end game, right? It's all about how you finish the race, not how you begin it. So, a new Brack comes into ban here. Potentially a respect ban, or it could be to mitigate any counter towards their team. Maybe they felt that a new rack was a problem. Zagara again banned out, and as I will say, say, a new rack a is fun? pretty nutty. Thank you so much, CX. I believe if I see your name correctly there. Zagara being banned from her recent buffs, as I have come to learn recently. My God, those baneling ranges are insane, right? So second ban coming up, maybe looking at um, Brightwing ban potentially. Again, still, as I'm still learning the Storm League meta, but they're going to get rid of Falstad here for the macro. Does, don't want to get gusted. Maybe even looking for a Stitches comp potentially. There's so many comps you could run here. Hey, and maybe if I'm lucky, I get game number two, Hanzo, right? That's what I'm looking for. Junkrat, understandable. Really annoying on this map. Gets great vision. Traps everywhere. Can queue bushes. Can queue enemies off the uh, channeling effects onto um, whenever you're trying to cap. But here we go. We have Stitches. Caesar Sal looking for Stitches here. So maybe we get a Medivh. Maybe we get um, Anduin Pool. Malfurion. The old classic, right? Um, but Junkrat's great band because Stitches and Junkrat, as we probably have all seen CCL, uh, that is insane. You just die. Doesn't matter who you are, you just die. It's just that simple. But here we go. Let's see how Team Backdoor counters the Stitches comp here. Maybe that's something in the store. Diablo and Tychus here. Uh, the classic combo, right? You love to see it. And I love to see a great Diablo game here. So let's see. On the side of ACA, right? Are you looking at Stukov, Brightwing? Uh, referring to Healer's Wife for Valum, are you looking at the Stukov again? Are you looking at Brightwing for follow-up, immediate follow-up um, Polymorph for CC? Or even the cold classic Malfurion, right? So we shall see in the next two seconds here. And followed up by DPS, I would assume. So Brightwing and Urel was wrong. So we are going to go immediately for the offlane. So really scary comp in the making for the side of ACA. But then again, Diablo, a Diablo comp, let alone, is pretty scary as well. And that's the most fun thing about Storm Division is both comps are obviously strategized, thought about, played um, in, you know, in coordination. And both comps are scary. It all comes down to small mitigating factors. And again, as we saw last game, only one misstep led to the game loss, right? It just it only takes that much. Hogger. Band out, maybe doesn't want to deal with a heavy tanky comp. Um, and here comes Malthale. Malthale is a great band here for great rotations, but also would shred URL and Stitches here for the high health pools. So now following up, what is potentially Heavy going to be looking at? Are we going to see a Stuke off here by Heavy? Um, or are we going to see an offlane take? Taken by Liam here? Or is Carbon going to? Okay, Carbon take, or Liam takes away the blaze and we have medivh great for getting um your opponents out so heavy last at least will we potentially see an anduin right so even though you have medivh for the portal will anduin also be in play as they're holding that or you know are we gonna see maybe a i'm trying to think into their comp maybe you know no malfurion wouldn't work i don't think right okay so we do see hanzo and we get oh a rainer here okay but i am curious though would anduin be the pick here oh kerazim excuse me i where am i at kerazim coming in dashing in dashing out putting out as much dps as possible and cleanses here heavy i'm sure is gonna be making either a some nasty cleanser stealing some nasty kills these comps are exciting to look at here. Again, I'm excited to see another Hanzo game. I tell you what, man, take your nose. But, and again, we have Medivh here, right? And a Karazim. It's a treat for us all, right? So here we go. Game number two, countdown right now. So I wonder what it comes down to strats here, right? Are they going to do the 5v5 mid? Or are they going to look to just clear and rotate for either team, right? Really comes down to that. And with the amount of CC effect in this, right, with URL 
and looking at the I mean even Blaze, right, with Liam like focusing on off laners right at the moment. On a CC. Who can CC each other the hardest, right? So here we go. Tyke is going with grenade build. And Karazim already Iron Fist. But let's introduce both teams. Starting out with Team Backdoor on the blue team here. Carbon playing Tychus. Chichuggy on Diablo. Heavy playing Karazim. Liam on Blaze. And Unaverted on the Medivh here. Starting over with Team ACA. We have Kelsier on Hanzo again. Got Filth on Rainer. Showing us the nasty ace in the hole again. <laughs> Stitch is here at Caesar Salad. Played by Caesar Salad. Right wing being played by Valimar and Urel by playing by dude abitus again if i mispronounce that flame me but i am curious how the rainer will fit in here right because rainer you know damage wise feels kind of messy kind of eh but you know not judging i'm here to learn that as well see how good rainer looks got filth is going to show us all right so here comes diablo focusing the rainer rainer is getting focused here but liam does so much damage here 709 health but here comes brightwing valimar coming in to save got filth here and with that low health we got to be careful with diablo looking for a great opportunity those angles were great on the only wall stun for rainer here but great rotation for the my for the medivh here great protection for diablo here and auto attack was selected by Kels here, though, which I'm excited to see how that plays out. And Karazine potentially being the focus here. But here comes a Diablo stun here. Is this enough on Balamar? Balamar should fall here. Right wing is going to be first blood over to the side of Team Backdoor. Now, camps are now up. They're going to look to reset here. Heavy is looking to start the camp. For the side of ACA, they are going to start their camp a little late. Well... Yeah, they're still going to start their camp a little late because they'll say, how fast can they clear that here? For the over to the side of Team Backdoor, Carbon on Tyke is ripping through each Sappers here. Rainer, hurry up, try to finish. Okay, they both finish same time, even though some Team AC8. The dude abides. Thank you. All right. Diablo getting focused, got filled, queuing him back, but they're looking for a nice stun on Caesar Salad, getting some poke damage here, but Rainer's the actual target here, but no, Caesar Salad going in and gets immediately healed back up. And here comes a nice Medivh here, getting the portal in and out, gets his team to reset, Jajaki getting stalled for his back here. And now you're looking at potential siege structure value. And here comes Badib getting focused here. Should I protect here? And Tychus coming up, putting pressure on Got Filth here, looking for a cheeky kill or just some separation to get pressure off unaverted here. And Diablo is mid, getting the soak for Liam. And now it's going to rotate bottom, staying mounted right and rotating down. Badib having port up and Urel. Up top, doing her thing, staying top side. But here we go. Let's look at some more talents again. Master Assassin, as I learned for the Odin. Gives a great attack speed. But ooh, chunk damage onto the Medivh here. Medivh gonna potentially portal dance, right? Nice protection here, but a little bit risky potentially. Yeah, Phil was focusing down the Medivh here. Dude, I am struggling with that dude's name. You know, we'll just we'll just say uh we'll just say Urel for now, dude. I'm killing it. <laughs> We're try I'm trying here. <laughs> here we go. First objective coming up. Triple Shrine here. They're gonna play for the neutral down below. Offlaner should potentially split off, looking to respectively get this. Ooh, but Medivh is not gonna make it time, and they are going to get the objective. For both sides in the lead for ACA, right? But as we know in Towers of Doom, the game is not lost till z there is zero life on the core. We have probably played in games where they're at you're at one and you return and you uh reverse sweep the game here. Those are always exciting to see here. Stitches and Kelsey are staying stitches and Hanzo staying down bottom. Here comes Karazim, just kind of lurking around, getting some vision here. And they see two. They should see they should see filth shortly. And here it comes. All five are rotating down. They're looking for a potential engage. They see the Anubrak, but great poke away by Got Filth here. Nice job. Recognition of Hanzo. Just get out of there. But ooh, Blaze is going to take tower shots, but immediate, immediate Will of Force onto Liam here. Yorel just pushing up top still. They survived the 5v4. Liam is using abilities to get up there ASAP. Clear up mid, then clear up top. So let's look at the level 7 talents here as well. 
So both camps are up. They might be looking aggressively onto their camp. Protection is caught by Unavert here. But oh, Rainer is caught up. Rainer should fall here potentially. Oh, great Q here. And Valimar with a great, oh, and a great poly. But can they get Valimar here? Diablo coming into a flip stun. And they kill Valimar for doing Brightwing's job. Saving the Rainer, but dies for it. Unlucky, unlucky. This is the life of a Brightwing. But Kelsier, ooh, getting a lot of damage. He might fall if I lose his stacks. He dies. He loses his stacks. Being a little aggressive against the Diablo, but ooh, Heavy getting caught. Caesar Salad looking for a great hook, but Heavy trolling him there. Little mana. Nice spray down. Brightwing is back, but Hanzo is still down. Altars are spawning in five seconds. They should be able to saw, right? You have stitches. They'll probably pull. They'll probably end up honestly pulling the Diablo by. Uh, for this body box. Oh no, Diablo's gonna be on it, and Carbon is looking for the middle and free way to soak down bottom. So now they're going to go look at their camp. Get your free tens, right? Don't fight a pre-ten. And for the side of ACA, either A look to invade pre-tens or you just soak 210 here, right? So nice. Nice invade. They're trying to look here, but Liam is here looking at the back line here. But ooh, great stuff by Got Phil for stunning out Liam. But he has the back up. Caesar Style getting really low. Caesar Style 2 health, 20 health, excuse me. But Brightwing, or excuse me, Hanzo getting caught by Diablo in the next rotation of his abilities here. But nothing happens. They get the stitches here. They're going to get their camp, and now they're going to push in bottom. They have their tens. Odin is now going to be up. And here we go. We're now sieging bottom. Here comes Tychus, Carbon putting in the work on this bottom fort wall here and looking for the sappers to do damage. And over time, just like Dragon Shire, you want to control bottom. And here comes Hanzo scouting out unaverted in no man's land. Nice sidestep in Polymorph here, reading the Stitches hook there. And now they're going to put some damage onto the fort here. Let's see where Kelsier's stacks are at. Kelsier's almost done with his stacks. Got Filth coming in with Rainer's Raid, or his Raiders here. Pushing that down, burning it down, and it's going to be scouting bushes, making sure that no one's looking to flank him. Let's look at your Let's give your, some of your else some love here. Must be uh, very fun <laughs> playing the off lane. Yeah, just soak, 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 right? Get every soak that you can here. Yep, that's the life, right? <laughs> Blaze coming on down. So it's been a lot of 5v4, right? Uh, maybe it's just due to the uh, Blaze out clearing the macro or the uh, creeps over Yorel. Yorel having to come down here, being called down, it looks like, to match middle, right? Stay near your team here because they don't want to give rotation prior. Now he, she has to catch mid. Yorel does, but they're going to immediately do a chain follow-up stun onto the Diablo here. Oh my god, it wasn't enough. It was not fast enough for the Brightwing. Got Phil is the next target. Your Brightwing should fall. Or excuse me, Got Phil should fall here. Rainer does fall. That's two dead. And Valimar looking to save out the Hanzo. And and the Medivh does catch Brightwing, but is it enough? They're looking for a potential chance, but no. They only get two, but that is huge. Now they're going to siege down bottom fort, and they're going to get two tower, two altar shots here. So, you know, you're losing ten shots to your core here. That's huge. That's a great turn for the side of control to team backdoor. Liam doing his abilities, getting back up to mid, catch that soak. And has to rotate top to catch the XP. And now at this point, as we've seen in a lot of higher level games, it's all about controlling bottom. It's all about controlling it and not letting your opponent have it back. But if you do, you want to make sure you get value elsewhere. But here we go. We have three sappers coming in. They're staying back. They do not want to get portaled on. Medivh looking. And they're just going to keep poking. Tyke is poking in. Here comes Blaze yet again looking for a sneaky 5v4. Is now rotating back. They're really utilizing the blaze very well here, getting them down, clearing the waves, and looking for the 5v4 consistently. Potentially, Yorel's game plan is just to keep, you know, soaking and soaking. Again, it's hard to read with the comms, not me not hearing comms here, but here comes Yorel, clearing out the waves here. Valimar using his level one. Let me see what it is. Or it looks like the attack speed one. Yep, adrenaline stim pack to clear the wave. And they're looking for a quick gank on the to Liam here. A nice hook, but nice boop out. Oh my god, they're just gonna keep pushing Mighty over to the four. Kelser getting out, reading the situation. This is really bad. Heavy running him down, making him lose his stacks here. And he's just gonna keep going. And they do kill Rainer. And Heavy kills Kelsier for his stacks again. Heavy with a sidestep here. Coming back in, running to his teammates here. And here's their 14 to 12 here. That was insane. Heavy 1v1 on Kelsier and Heavy taking the win for the 1v1. And here we go. He's sieging now top. So now they have to potentially for the side of ACA siege down bottom. This is bad, right? This is going to be six shots 
Potential going over to the side of Team Backdoor. Here we go. Side of ACA is coming back alive. They're going to try taking down CG down the fort here with five seconds left. Medi potentially looking. But oh, the Gorge potentially. Ew, unaverted. Has no potential way out. Heavy running in immediately. This is really sketchy. A Diablo is immediately going to start taking the objective down bottom to mitigate that. But Medivh got his stacks. He said, time to throw there, baby. But great stall. <laughs> Heavy couldn't make it in time. Heavy super low. And Blaze in a nice steal. Oh, didn't get it in time. Liam understands he's got to get out. Nice dead step. Reading that telegraph play and that funnel. But here we go. Control is now switching potentially over to the side of ACA. They're looking for to take a nice cheeky hook. And they're going to start playing for the bottom fort here. I believe that 13 minutes it turns into a keep wise. Um, but nonetheless, trying to take back the control of the map, right? You have to take back your top bell tower. Now you see Stitches posturing around his siege camp, pinging for it. Let's start this immediately while the Medivh is rotating in. Kelsier committing into the hybrid build here that we see here. A lot of damage can be poked out here. With the level 4 talent as well, you get great range with your auto attack to stay the hell away from the Diablo. But then again, it may not matter because Medivh's just might portal just right on top of you. But at least you have instant kill, wave clear. Kelsier looking for a rotation to see if Diablo or anyone else is lurking around. Now they're going to rotate top side to get their bell tower. But the side of team backdoor is immediately going to recognize this and start sieging down bottom, which is, again, important. So here we go. We have triple shrines again, one neutral, two to each side. On your side of team backdoor, you just take yours in the neutral, right? Unless you're feeling a little spicy yet because you have a 16 talent advantage. But let's see, can ACA get 16 in time? Or... Will Team Backdoor just take theirs in the neutral since they, you know, when it comes to a trade-off, this is a great trade for them. Medivh scouting out the Urel here. Urel looking to stall. They're looking to potentially get their 16. As we can see, Gottfeld in mid looking to clear the minion wave. Carbon taking theirs. But, oh, nice. Nice cleanse, but it wasn't enough. Urel looking to stop Carbon here, but here comes Heavy. Heavy should be able to dash out, but nice Hanzo arrow onto the back line, but instantly Medivh gets clapped. And Jishuggy getting so much damage on by Kelsey. You know, so much damage. Souls are now gone. They eat Liam, and now they're going to put him in a corner. And there should be an immediate follow-up stun and lock, and here goes Liam. That's three. That's two down, excuse me. Well, it was technically three, but Diablo lost his souls. And now they're going to take this, right? And now they're going to immediately take Boss off the map here. So now it's 26 to 40 here, 16 to 16 here. And we're getting, you're getting your 2% Giant Slayer here. Nice cleanse. You know what's crazy is Heavy got the cleanse, but it was a tick after the Stitches hook connected. Yeah, man, this, uh, this overlay is pretty sick. I thoroughly enjoy it, especially when I do my replays and stuff, man. I always recommend Spazzo's replay. If you ever need it, let me know. Here we go. ACA looking to take Team Backdoor's um, Sapper Camp to push in, and it allows them to get pressure down bottom and to take back the Bell Tower while Medivh has to clear that. So now we're looking neutral. Urel, is she going to be able to make it in time top? It looks like it, right? It's going to be in time. Yep, going to make it just in time. Be able to handle that. Sorry about that. Thought I heard thunder booming outside. It's been monsooning and stuff. Nice check by Kelsier. Looking to make sure if it's safe because he sees Medivh posturing. They didn't all believe they saw Heavy. What do you say? Maybe. Ready to have a little fun? Maybe they see Stitch is looking for a cheeky hook. I missed that. My apologies there. But here it goes. Kelsier scouting it out. Now, Team Backdoor wants to take redemption for their camp here. And oh my god, look at the chunk on it. the Diablo here. Nice and stoppable and heal over to the side of Heavy here. And here it comes. Here comes the objectives. 15 seconds. Neutral, right? Are they going to look for the trade for side team ACA? Or are they going to look to invade and turn the tide here? Four, four to four shots here. Looking like they're just going to take the free trade. Urel stepping up. Posturing around. Getting vision. Making sure that they play the vision game. Because it's all about vision. Carbon looking like he's calling out that there's someone in the bush. And they are looking to stall. Urel looking to install. Carbon looking for the... Looking for a... Oh my god. Looking for a... Um, Loss of words there. Stun out from the Euro, but Euro should fall here. 
There's so much going on here. Yorel was trying to jump in, but Carbon was looking for the grenade to boop him out of it. And all I'm seeing is bad situation getting worse and worse and worse for the Yorel. But they take the trade, right? They take the trade. So now you're looking to an 18-9 to 9 game. Still anyone's game at the moment, but here we go. They're going to siege bottom yet again. <laughs> the, the URL. I was completely lost to words just because of the fact that, like, oh, yeah, what a nice stall. Oh, my. That's the whole team rotating on you. <laughs> Stitch is looking for a grab to save the URL, obviously, at that point in time, but unfortunately catches heavy instead. It's not who you're looking for. But... Here you go, Team ACA backing off, they know. But, oh, Medivh is going to give a great portal onto Valimar here. Valimar is just going to immediately use Emerald Wind here. Just get out of there, right? So we take the level 20 hyper. Oh, excuse me, read that wrong. So level 20s are coming up. I would assume, mm, especially when it comes to Emerald Wind level 20, I'm actually curious what level 20 he's going to pick. Is he going to do the spam level 20? Is that worth Versus the other, you know, Brightwing abilities here. We shall see in the next few seconds here. Ooh, Medib looking for a great setup here. But can Diablo catch the target? He wants great Hanzo arrow. But they are looking for the Diablo here. So, so level 20 is hit by both teams here. Kind of curious. Okay, so we are going to get spam Emerald Winds here. Unaverted. Going to take some chunk damage here. Going to play by the wall. Is Kelsey going to look? But nice. Cleanse and heal. Stitches. Potentially looking for a cheeky snap. See if Medivh will play the portal game. Like the thought here. And they're just going to play around their their, for, their keep here now, right? So they're going to take it back. ACA posturing up. And there comes Diablo. Diablo is going to posture up to immediately start capturing, right? Is it going to be Diablo that's going to start capping? Or they're, no, they're going to look to fight. They know there's no point in taking this. You have to fight this now, right? Stitches getting immediately ulted on. But Brightwing... My, oh no, he missed, but they still catch the Rainer here. Great Gorge, but it's not going to be enough. Great Hellstorm. Diablo coming in. Caesar Salad getting low, but immediately comes back up. Hell, Jesus. Look at the heals, but oh, they're going to feel the follow up here. And Brightwing is trying to boop him away, but is Unaverted going to catch too? He does, and this should be a dead Hanzo, right? Looking at the wall down below, but great arrow and song arrow, but nice and stoppable by Heavy here proactively reading the plays here by Hanzo. Are they going to go for Hanzo? Are they all going to go in? They don't. But wow, they annihilated the four-man team here. They're going to take bottom, and they're going to get another five shots here for the side of Team Backdoor. Team Backdoor coming out strong, swinging too. Brightwing getting a lot of value here, but oh, wait a minute. We're going for the mid-keep too. All right, Carbon coming in hot with his Odin here, especially at level 20, right? And with, oh, Master Assassin, right? 13 kills three more and he gets 15 percent oh man that's gonna be nutty so they are gonna play for the boss here and they're gonna try taking but kelsey are looking for an aggressive play here heavy running at him but liam getting pressured by got filth while they take top boss they're trying to make it as liam is taking a lot of damage here but heavy just running down kelsey again rainer gonna try taking the point here and liam just continuously going to keep poking away. Got Filth just kind of needs to back up. Can Heavy do it? Can Heavy win the 1v1? Backs off. Brightwing is up. Stitches is coming down. This is a fight. Oh, no. They just lost three sappers. This is it. If Team Backdoor takes this, they win the game for game number two here. Brightwing having to use alt. It's going to be on another tardy up. <laughs> and here we go. Diablo maybe looking to pre-tap before this fight medivh or they're just gonna give it okay they're just backing off they know that it's 18 or now gonna be 15 to 2 it's fine right you still control bottom if on the side of aca if they lose this team fight they can take their sappers and run it in so this is a team fight they want here right let's have the team back door all right here we go let's see how Team Backdoor is going to posture here. All lanes are pressured onto the side of ACA here. Liam spreading out oil, trying to slow down CC something here. Stitches potentially looking for a fat fishing hook here. Let's see it. Let's see if Caesar Salad can pull something off here. Can he get a spicy hook? He's, he's hunting. He's looking. Here we go. They're starting to be aggressive onto the keep here. Trying to take back their bell towers. 
And here we go, just a stagnate. But guys, look at that, the chip damage here. But ooh, Liam getting pulled in by stitches that we just saw. Urel setting up, looking aggressive. And they might wait for the next minion wave, which should come up in the next two seconds. They're just going to keep poking. Nice cleanse by Heavy there. Nice cleanse was reading that play from the stitches and denied that. But here we go. Now here comes a minion wave for the side of ACA. And they're going to clear out team back doors. And they're going to try putting more pressure. So now they're going to back off. This is the two bell towers here, right? You start taking your siege camp. Put pressure in the lane. And you start playing for one of the two. You have to, you, you can split this up. It's going to be a 5v4 at one point, or they look for the 5v5, and hopefully no one tries sneaking one of the shrines, right? Particularly the bottom one. All right, guys, let's see. Is this going to be the game ending here? They're going to pre-tap here, looking for a big fight here. Diablo kind of by himself. Carbon is alone, but Stitches hooks him at Heavy, looking for a nice cleanser. Liam stunning out Stitches here, and Heavy putting some damage onto Caesar Salad here. Rainer trying to take top. Sure, I'll alter here, but Medivh is going to stall. But we see also Yorel, right? But they get a stun onto the Karazim here, and they're forcing away. They need to step in. Heavy is going to potentially get it. Can they do it? They do. They get it. And Team Backdoor wins it due to the nice stall by Blaze. <laughs> GG's. That was insane of a game. It was getting close. But Team Backdoor in full control. So now there's a 2 0 victory going over Team Backdoor. Now we're one game away, potentially looking at a game-winning close for Team Backdoor. So let me update the score for them. They won that game 2-0. All righty. Guys, what an exciting game, exciting match, right? Like, first of all, we I just, I just want to personally shout out Heavy. I mean... That kerosene play, the stitches, the stitches hook that he was proactively reading and cleansing. I mean, I just got to give it to him. That was nutty. That was insane of a proactive read. I just want to call that out. That is insanely hard to do. Uh, but overall, everyone played great. But I just want to give, I just want to give Heavy a shout out that that was that was massive of the st uh, stitches cleanse that he was doing. I was admiring that heavily. And I also want to look at the damage because. I was also looking at Kelsier's Hanzo and the amount of damage he was doing, right? He was just immediately chunking and chunking and chunking the Diablo over and over and over and blowing up, right? And it was exciting to see, right? Because you're also seeing the auto attack Hanzo here. Or, excuse me, the auto attack hybrid build. We didn't really get to see much of Yorel that game, even though I butchered his name the entire time, which he's... I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, let's see if there's another lobby up. There is. They are go, go, go. Oh, let me pick that winner. They, oh, wait. Excuse me. Um, one. Ah, I see what I did wrong. There we go. All right. Let's see what we got here. So we are going to BOE for game number three. Sort of eternity pick. Selected by ACA. Now let's see. Can Team Backdoor solidify this win here? Frosty seems like he's having a good time. I sure am, man. I'm having a great time watching games like this. Play a little background music while we wait. Have a little playlist of I sure am. I I thoroughly enjoy games like these. This is a best of five, yes. Yeah, Death Strike. The um that blaze stun and the and the bunker is nutty. Ah, no worries, swag. But I hope you guys are hoping for a best of five as I am. Let's see ACA kick some life back into this lobby. Game three, winner already called Pogger scripted. <laughs> yes, yeah, shoo, sh you don't. <laughs> All right, we are ready as well as them. All right, both teams are up and running here. We are about to start in a few seconds here. All right, let's switch over to the draft here. Game number three here, 2-0. In the lead of Team Backdoor. 
and let's see are we gonna see <laughs> and i keep saying this but are we gonna see another hanzo here because i hanzo and all these maps man they, they they just work just let it happen kelsier to keep taking it my man i believe or will we see carbon's infamous Li ming or will it get banned out Li ming's pretty pretty popular on here pretty strong but meta is always different in each division right So first ban, are we going to be looking at an assassin, a tank, maybe ban Diablo, maybe ban Stitches, uh, maybe even ban out the Hanzo, you know, who knows. So we're going to ban out the Stuke off here. Nice chokes. Valimar with a great Stuke off here. Don't want to deal with it, but also could stop the uh, team backdoors comp here. And another <laughs> respect Zagara ban. You know, one of these days I'm going to cast a Zagara game. One of these days, right? Now, following up ban for the side of Team Backdoor, are we now going to look at Assassin, or are we going to try mitigating a... Or, or maybe choke out the healer here, maybe mitigate the healing pool. So we are going to get a Diablo ban. But I am curious, though. If Team Backdoor is a... <laughs> if they don't backdoor fake advertising. Yo, what if we see a Juice comp, right? What if, what if we see them juice pirate them? Oh my god, the disrespect that they did do that. <laughs> That'd be insane. We haven't, I haven't seen one of those since uh, Fnatic. So we do get a Li Ming ban um, due to... Uh, I'm just going to flat out say, if y'all don't know Carbon, Carbon to me is the infamous Li Ming. But we get the Junkrat here. So are we potentially going to see a Stitches here? Um, but Junkrat is still really good on this map. Right, great poke, great vision. It's a two-lane map. You can put your traps and you can boop yourself or enemies uh, in unfavorable positions here. Now, I'm kind of curious to see how they play BOE. Are we going to take a Hanzo again? Are we going to look at Sylvanas here? Um, are we going to look at the healer? Take away Brightwing potentially. So we are going to get Sylvanas in a new brack here. Okay, Cocoon. And they ban out the Li Ming, so there is um, no Disintegrate. But I am curious, though, with the Anubrak, though, is that also a great play to try to counter a Stitches comp, potentially? Again, I'm not just trying to just focus because they have a Junkrat. You know, there's still other tanks available, but Stitches is looking pretty spicy because uh, I have seen Anubrak go from 100 to 0 um, instantly. Okay, so they, Anaverta takes the Hanzo. Yes, we are literally three games deep with a Hanzo. I love to see it. And Brightwing being played by Heavy. Now, I wonder if Hebby's going to go that level 7 talent again due to how this is maybe starting to play out. You know, Nubrak with these stuns. Uh, maybe they're going to have some more slows on the side of ACA. So, definitely something for me to look out for. But let's see what the final ban is here. They're maybe looking at your tanks, right? Tanks and offlanes, all that's less. So they're going to ban a Garrosh here. Respectable. Garrosh is pretty scary. Lockdown with Brightwing, Junkrat, Trap, maybe boop into unfavorable position. Hanzo, chunk damage by then. You're you're gone. You're back in the Nexus. Oh, come on. Juicers aren't that bad, man. <laughs> oh, man. You know Morales is buff, so it's, uh, it's totally a thing, right? <laughs> maybe one of these days we'll see a Juice Pirate game. Probably like a 0.5%. And we get another Hogger ban here. Unaverted just wants to try and one shot the wants wants to one shot the Anub. Hey man, I'm down to see it, man. I'm down to see someone get one shotted. I'll I'll freaking flip out. Like, oh my god, from downtown. But will the arrow hit ratio be higher? Right. Nice stun setup comp. I mean, it's both both Hanzo players definitely would crap all over my Hanzo. Like I would just miss. Ooh, we get a Chen. Oh my god, and my boy Lucio. All right, all right. So maybe a barrel, looking potentially at a barrel, or Panda Pals. But I have a feeling it might be barrel here, uh, but I could be wrong here. All right, so now we have Murden, and we're looking at an offlaner here. Maybe Leoric, potentially. Um, Sonya, uh, Blaze again from Liam. Okay, so we do get a Blaze. And the last pick going over the Kelsey, are we going to see a Mage pick here? Are we going to see another um, auto attacker here? I mean, race-wise for the side of ACA is looking pretty good. They have Sylvanas over, or excuse me, for a team backdoor. And ACA, they have Sylvanas at the moment. But who else can 
Kelsey or go here for great race here and also great team fight of course Sonya Ooh, we're going we're going beefy right so so team ACA recognizes that <laughs> Junkrat and Anzo are uh pretty squishy uh, you know, Murden can only do so much to peel. Blaze might be the big issue when it comes to peels due to the bunker. I agree. Barrel could be devastating for, for their back line. But here we go. Game number three, guys. This comp is looking pretty juicy. Who do you guys have here? It's hard for me to say. But I'm excited to see it nonetheless. I'm kind of, I will say this. I am curious how Murden is and, and Blaze, right? How they're going to help peel. Uh, the back line for, you know, Hanzo and Junkrat. Because at level 10, this is going to get pretty insane. Um, I'm just going to call it how it is. All right, everybody. Let's introduce both teams for the third time. We're hoping for a comeback win from ACA to see if they can take us to a game number five. Excuse me. So introducing Team Backdoor, we have Carbon playing Junkrat, Blaze being played by Liam, Brightwing being played by Heavy, Murden being played by Juchuggy, and last but not least, Hanzo being played by Unaverted for the time of Team Backdoor. Now, for the side of ACA, we have Sylvanas being played by Kelsier, and Nubrak being played by Caesar Salad, Chen being played by Abidas, Sonya being played by Gottfeld, and Lucio being played by Valimar. So here we go. We see an aggressive push top, and Liam is staying back, waiting to see where they're going to go. Here comes Kelsey here, focusing down the forward here, and they're looking for the cheese. An immediate response over by the side of Team Backdoor. They recognize this, and Balamar looking very aggressive. Nice sidestep here. I'm sure Frosty Wynn in the chat would be like, ooh, little frisky Lucio. We like to see it, right, Frosty? All right here. Sonya looking to clear. Top. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so there's going to be an aggressive top push here. Instead of the bot lane, as we would see. So here we go. Hanzo getting some nice poking. Let's go ahead and remove this here. But as we can see, Hanzo's going for the stack. He's already at four stacks. Less than a minute in. That's pretty good here. Sonya looking for an aggressive push onto Carbon here. Got a lot of chunk damage. Nubrak missing. But Brightwing coming up the poly. Or, and Juchuggy hitting a nice Q. But ooh, Lucio getting caught by a trap here. Should fall here for being first blood here. Being a little frisky. So here we go. Caesar Salad also looking kind of low. Here comes a nice kill by um, Unaverted here. And he's trying to follow the Sylvanas there. Ooh, tried to snipe him in mid. Down. Wave of wave here. Not wave of force, excuse me. Make <laughs> sure I'm reading that correctly. All right. So with two kills and also now taking the neutral can, this is huge for the side of Team Backdoor. Dude, they are just coming in swinging. They are like, we're taking a 3-0 victory here. We're going to do everything we can, right? So now it's three to two here. Now they're looking the pressure down bottom. Chen holding his own. Kels here. Helping out Chen. Maybe looking at the neutral here, but they're gonna start pushing up top here. Sonya getting kind of low here. And Junkrat running away. Doesn't have bomb. Or doesn't have his own self bomb to push him out. But Hanzo now looking to take bottom here. Wow, this is gonna be two neutral camps in the span of less than pre-230, right? So now Bruisers will be up. So we want to start taking that around, starting at, at least at 215. Take it at 245, right? Because your next minion wave will spawn at 230. So by 245, they should be around here. And here's going to be a fight up top, taking tower shots by the Anubrak here. Two, 2v3 holding their own here by a 2v3 down here. Hanzo is taking the neutral camp. And here comes Unaverted jumping over, trying to get Sylv. But here we go. We should see... Potentially started the bruiser camp shortly. No, we do not, but we are gonna see team ACA taking theirs. Take it immediately. And try pushing out top wave. We see unaverted starting their camp. And they'll have about 250. But as I was saying, right, 245, right? If you start taking it, 242, 245, it's already here. And it's now gonna be pushing into the lane, just for anyone who didn't know what I was talking about. And they both time in equal timing. Pretty standard. And here comes Got Filled looking to clear the wave. Chen clearing the wave, trying to catch back up. I mean, five to four. And they're on the way to six halfway. This is huge for this IPT backdoor. They're looking to see if Chen's going to make an aggressive push. And let's see how much has Hanzo stacks at. Hanzo's already at nine stacks. Half, almost halfway there. But they're looking to be aggressive up here, right? Liam getting help by the right wing here. So now, it's a, it's now the whole team inside team backdoor is now responding here. But ooh, the Anubrak's getting really chunked here. Great defense by the side 
of Team Backdoor. Hanzo getting some great entry damage here. Getting about 3k. About 3k damage in. Roughly. Lucio looking aggressively, but a new brat coming in. They're trying to focus on the Hanzo, but great stuff by Brightwing here. Oh my god, Lucio looking to be aggressive, but falls for that. Great catch by Liam here, waiting patiently, waiting for the Lucio to be aggressive and coming in, flying. And here we go, another stun. And oh my god, the new Brack's getting absolutely murdered, and it's just no chance. Zero chance. But due to that, now halftime is caught. But due to that kill, they did kind of catch up and they do see Team Backdoor just being so aggressive here, just running at this beefy front line. Liam rotating down bottom, and now they're gonna start doing a trade, right? Because you have two dead or one dead, they're now coming in. Let's see who wins it. Let's see how low side of ACA can lower this here. I mean, oh, this is going to be still three, five minutes. Still pretty good. 6.1k life on the Immortal here. This is a tough start over to the side of Team ACA and making that comeback here. But again, game just started here. So let's see. Can team, let's see how Team ACA defends this point right now. So I'm looking to see if Carbon is going to throw over a bomb... Uh, you know, a mine trap or concussion mine. Excuse me, see if you can boop one over. Maybe not, but here it comes. A new brack on the side here, looking for an aggressive boop. So he boops out the Lucio. Liam coming in, but oh, Sylvan is falling. Super aggressive here, and they should be able to secure the fort here off the first one. Oh, they're just going to skip past because Caesar Salad just put himself in an unfavorable situation. Caesar Salad should fall here. Oh my god, can Valimar. Yeah, he's surely dead. Surely he's dead. Right. So now there's two bottom. Got filled. He's just going to rotate, right? Top's gone. You need to start putting pressure. Chen scouting. Mrs. Liam. And Liam is hunting down a Sonya. Brightwing coming in to, coming to assist. Doesn't dismount. And Chen is just at his fort. So now I am, dude. 9 to 7 lead right now. This is nutty. And now they're focusing the well, right? Got filled looking to do some damage onto the Murden here. But can't do anything, but immediately got filled with the spin the wind build, I believe, here. Is that what I'm seeing here? At least the level four that we're seeing. And now we go. A minute ten till the next objective here. Sylvanas pushing out top. You have four down bottom here. Nubrat coming in aggressively. Misses. They're pinging to be aggressive onto the Nubrat for coming in. And they're going to start CCing the hell out of the Nubrat. Nubrat getting booted back. And Hanzo just having a heyday on the Nubrat here. Chen just trying to get out of there. He's like, oh, no, 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 get out, get out. <laughs> and got filled coming from a flank. That's the lead, but oh, no, Chen might be hard stuck into this CC chain. And Murdy gets it. Oh, what a great stun. This should be another kill. What a great follow-up by team backdoor. Unaverted looking, looking for blood here with his Hanzo. And now that's two force down pre-seven minutes into the game for team backdoor. It's a 10 to 8. This is... This is a snowball effect in the making right now, everybody. Unaverted going back for mana be here. Got filled. Trying to get some XP back, right? Trying to play for 10s here, right? And and to be fair, I'm curious to see ACA's comp post 10, right? Especially for how squishy uh, their back line is. It's a race to 10 for Team ACA. And they have the objective coming in 30 seconds. And Got filled is just waiting, seeing where the enemy team's at. They have no, they may have vision of the Murden or Junkrat, but nope, they see Sonya and they know that Sonya knows that he's going to be aggressed on. And this should be a free kill for the side of team backdoor on Gottfeld on the Sonya. Sonya is just, just conceding death here. Shorten his cooldown timer to a 20 seconds. Bruiser camps is taken by team ACA. They're going to clear bottom, play for the halftime show, get your 10 and see what you can make of your dive comp here onto their back line. Brightwing will be really annoying. Uh, for a dive comp um, But we shall see right we shall see how the junk rat and how the Hanzo play around especially and I think blaze will end up being the saving grace for peels You just drop a bunker and they should be all right, but if he goes Oh, we, we got panda pals here So here we'll look at the alts here so you guys can see it as well high five for stuns Yep leap as expected cocoon and storm earth and fire so I want to see how this plays out. Not saying that was a bad pick at all, obviously, but I want to see how this plays out because you're like literally diving onto an enemy here. Like you pick a target and you just blow them up um, onto their back lines. I know it's pretty straightforward, uh, but it's not to call it out for y'all. Here comes Chen giving some shields, stepping up. Kels here looking to do some damage, but guys, for the quick minute, look, top camp's got a siege camp pushing in. They got to be careful here. Oh, here comes Panda Pals. Liam spots it out, and the whole side of um, 
Team backdoor hooks up, but here comes Carbon. Oh, but Hanzo misses his arrow here, but here comes the sounds on the Brightwing. Brightwing should be the target. Brightwing has got stunlocks. Brightwing is dead. Nice cocoon onto Liam for no bunker here. Now Brightwing's fallen here. Now this is a potential takeover, unless Hanzo's looking, but Anubrak is in an awkward situation here. Gets stunlocked, gets caught. Falamar is trying to get out. Unfortunate situation for the Anubrak falling there. Now it's a 4v4, but Chen, can Chen survive here? They get a nice stun lock on Kels here on the Sylvanas here. Sylvanas does fall. Ooh, unaverted. Looking for a nice kill, but great catch by the Murden with the Q stun, right? Great catch. And what turned out to be an unfavorable situation for the side of Team Backdoor, they just said, just kidding, Let's call an ambulance, but not for me, for you. And then now they're going to take it down bottom. So as we're seeing here, 13 to 1 here, Team Backdoor leading a statement, right? <laughs> My god. Especially the Hanzo. Let me see this. Yeah, Hanzo leading the game with 5 kills here. Carbon getting some nice boops though. Nice CC steps up here. There is a ping. They're expecting a aggressive play for the side of Team ACA. Sylvanas going in, but they do kill the Anubrak again. Here comes Gottfield focusing onto Heavy here, but nice stun onto the Chen here. They are trying to do everything they can, and they just need to get out. <laughs> Valimar looking for an aggressive player. Nice Sylvanas uh, <coughs> wailing arrow here, but is enough. S Sonya in the back line getting low. They're just going to focus down Sonya trying to sidestep away and trying to bait back them away from their keep here, but the keep should still fall, but Chen is should be able to be the next one to fall here. And I don't know, if they get another kill, this is potentially looking like game, but just how dominant the side of Team Backdoor is. A nice, great hit by Unaverted onto the Lucio here. Now, they have a Half-Life Immortal. They just back off, right? You 14 to 11, there's nothing left to do. You got your keep, you're three levels, okay, two levels ahead. Oh, actually three, because you're about to be 15. And the Impaler camps up. Take everything off the map and reassess, re <laughs> get your mana back. But if you're on the side of Team ACA, this is a tough position. 11 minutes into the game, right? You have one, you have one keep left, no structures, and the enemy just has a gate down and a tower down, right? So this is a bit daunting on the side of Team ACA. They need, they're down at the moment. They're down three team fights. What I mean by that, you. You know, as the cooldown, as the timers go, eventually it'll be two team fights. But they need to win a team fight, start taking structures, win back your lanes, take everything off the map when it comes to structures and camps. As we can see, Unaverted is holding this as long as he possibly can. And now they're taking it. Now they have Vision. So this is a pre-16 fight. So if you decide of Team Backdoor, you don't give them that fight. And ACA is looking. They want to be aggressive here. They have nothing to lose at this point. You know, you got to force your fight. And now they're going to take away their camp. If that's that team back door, you can honestly just get it. You don't need to do much here. Here we go. They take it. They give it. Always for the 16. So they take the Bruiser camp prior to the objective here, right? 30 seconds left. Siege camp is again pushing. And they're probably going to take their Bruiser camp as well and have send one top to clear, right? But 16 will be in favor for the side of team back door. Guys, this is a tough spot. This might be the end of the game, or this could be the start of an adventure for Team ACA. They, it's it's three levels behind. They have to do something here, um, but they are gonna have lane pressure up top. And Newbrack looking for a potential chance. You know, scouting around. Savannah setting up. Sonya looking up for a flank too. Going around the world to surprise him. Chen. I think they I think they may know, right? Yeah, they're looking for Sonya. They know Sonya's missing. Uh-oh. So it's being procced here. 13-16 fight. Here comes a nice leap. And here comes a stun onto the Sonya. But no follow-up in time. Blaze is inside of the cocoon here. Can they get a follow-up? Because they missed their stun locks here. Chen is now back up into his non-Panda Pal form, into main Chen form. He's taking a lot of damage here, but nice Hanzo air onto Savannah's, but Valimar coming in with a nice stun, but isn't enough. Murden, then again, nice double kill. Nice double stun, I mean, but Sonya getting annihilated too by the Brightwing. And here comes Murden. Murden doesn't care. Murden's doing a 1v3 here, but here comes Blaze. Blaze coming in with a tag team here. It's gonna be 2v3. Now here comes Heavy. Heavy wants in on the action. They're gonna try to get the Chen. Chen should fall here. Chen trying to sidestep, but is it enough? Nope, he gets killed by the Junkrat here. A new brag in an unfavorable situation. Nice 
cleansed by Valimar, but this isn't looking too good. And that's a four-man team wipe there. Valimar, the only one left. And now they're going to get the halftime show, cleared the bruisers, and now you're getting some uh, catapults down bottom here. Lucio, what shall you do? What is going to be your fate here, my man? Are you, <laughs> are you just kind of wait for your team, defend this, maybe potentially fight behind? But this is going to be a full level or it's gonna be full health immortal coming top lane obviously keep is just gone but this is looking like this is looking like game here it's just, just gotta be flat out honest with you this is looking like game liam going back for full mana right there's no tap side of the team back door you are looking great here you're taking the you're taking the initiative you're ta being proactive looking at uh taking initiative with your stun locks and here we go so now we're going to see Murden uh, trying to scout out to the side of Team Backdoor. Liam knew it. Liam knows that they have to fight behind. If you take this fight, which is really good with a three-man three man stun lock here. And here comes Solanus Air, but Valmar getting super low. Sonya coming in and trying to focus on the Brightwing. And your Brightwing trying to run away. Brightwing should be able to teleport away. And here comes Carbon's ult here. Not really hitting anybody. Caesar Salad getting stun locked here. Murden coming in. Nice stun by Jachug here. But Chen... Coming in, trying to stun lock the Hanzo here, but it's not going to be enough. Chen will probably be the next one to fall. Valimar trying to get him out, but oh, nice double stun by the Murden here. Murden kills the Lucio. This is two. This is a three-man wipe, and this is a full... Uh, this is a very healthy Immortal onto the court, and this is looking like GG. 3-0 victory over to the side of Team Backdoor, guys. I just want to say the games were exciting, ecstatic any word that you could imagine that was this was a fun match i was hoping for game number five game number four but what an exciting match we got to see hanzo but anyway guys gg to both teams and congratulations to team backdoor murden murden really did put in the work i mean those stuns those key stuns were just lining up i mean i mean just looking at the stats unaverted you know okay like uh kills wise because carbon was doing so much damage and so much cc stuns and, and you know doing a lot but the kills wise man hanzo was chunking the anubarak i mean my god so that was a very rough matchup especially for a beefy front line um it didn't really work out but the brightwing really did well again the level seven as i was talking about with the way heavy was um looking at here and you know this was Really exciting to see this into play to let others understand that it really helps when it comes to uh, healing, but also removing disabling effects from the ally. And look at their team, guys. Like, oh my god, you want to talk about disabling effects? Jesus. Overall, though, what an exciting night, exciting games. It's your boy Frosty. I'm back. See me in, see me in face. I know I look like a hobo. Uh, let me see if they want to do an interview. So, you know, what's funny is I did pick one here, right? <laughs> I did pick, did pick that. All right. So while I wait to see if anyone wants to do a, um, a interview, let me do a quick commercial break for y'all so I can get some water and I'll be right back.
Wait, I'm muted. Thank you. All right. So I have not gotten, I have not gotten a response from Carbon yet. Um, so I guess we're not going to be doing a post interview. Thank you so much, O'Malley Hots, for the bits, guys. I just want to say if you. Uh, enjoy the cast if you guys enjoyed uh, having me on feel free to uh, drop a sub drop a follow come visit the channel uh, feel free to say hey i thoroughly enjoyed casting the storm division if you guys want me to take a look at y'all's um take a look at any of the matches to cast as well i'm open you know feel free to dm me but guys uh oh did we get something yeah there we go we got one there we go we got an interview perfect i was just about to call it Still muted. Should be able to see me. Channel. Shouldn't be muted. No, I'm not muted. Alright, cool. Um uh, we will go to let's go to lobby two. Alright, cool. We're gonna go to lobby two here. Perfect. Guys, I'm excited. Here we go. Ah, it's the tank main. Very impressive tanking tonight, Jajuggy. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I will say, man, you're murdered in there, popping off, hitting them double stuns. It's it ain't easy, man. It ain't easy. You were sniping <laughs> yeah. the Lucio, man. <laughs> uh, I um, I was, I was upset. I missed the stun on Lucio at the end. Um, Hanzo hit a big arrow, mm -hmm. and if I stun the Lucio. They uh they probably all die a lot faster. We don't risk like the potential for us to split and like choke and they get a pick or something. Right. But, uh, it's it it's honestly just pretty easy with uh with Junkrat or and Blaze too. Right. Like the comms the comms took a lot off my shoulders and the traps really oppressive as well. So who was um I always like to ask this question you know how how were the comms you know or was the comms fluid was it you know, sporadic, you know, was like, how are the shot calling going? Like, again, not probing for information, but just liking to hear about the communication of y'all's team, because it felt fluid. Yeah, I, um, game one, I was, it was like me personally, I was pretty, pretty scatterbrained, um, with like my calls. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like it got better over the course of the set. Um, so like we would always have, uh, Liam, our offlaner, like call whenever he's soaking or he's not there. That way we don't uh force any like unnecessary fights. Right. Uh for team fights, um either me or the DPS is calling just like if we're looking, uh we we tried to clear it up like who who would engage first, like me or Liam, and I think that got better as the game went on. Uh, or as the series went on. And mm -hmm. towards the end I was I would say, you know, I, I go first, or I'm saying, like, I'm I'm waiting for your place done. Um, so I, th I think, um, I mean, I was just kind of antsy for the first game, but then mm -hmm. after that, uh, the, the crowds were, the, the comms weren't crowded. Right. Um, we played off each other really well. And I will say, you know, um, all, the first game is always, you know, pretty nerve wracking, right? Because, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what the tempo of the game is going to be. Yeah. Um, until you break that ice, right? It, it doesn't yeah. matter how many times you could be playing for the thousandth time competitively. It's always going to be that way. Yeah. So, but I for mean, sure. even even for your nerves, man, for looking at your Dragon Shower game, looking at your Towers of Doom game, and obviously your BOE game, and you looked amazing. Uh, so let me ask you this too: Did you guys happen to notice a lot? You know, on especially on Towers of Doom, you know, Liam was consistently rotating down bottom, clearing out the lanes fast, and just forcing those five e fours a lot. You know, I'm, I'm assuming that you, there was that call out from Liam, and y'all were just punishing it. You know, so uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, you, you go ahead. I was actually about to ask you, um, mm -hmm. tell me more about that. Like, how was that like for y'all? Um, well, our, our thought process going in was just that uh, Liam was going to have a lot of wave priority, um, as you saw. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to use that aggressively uh, early on to play for invades. Um, I think I, I got a bit chunked, or we, we weren't, like, quick to invade the first time, so we, we chose not to. Um, but yeah, each, each successive time, um, I, I mean, he, 
he did a good job right focusing on the waves so that we had priority he always called it out and then uh we're we're always trying to make sure that they step up into us so that we don't dive into their towers for gorge mm -hmm. and then from there just uh just punishing the stitches whenever we had the priority right and then now for my last two questions for you, the, this one, you know, for switching over to BOE quickly, um, you know, how did, what made you, what prompted you into taking, you know, the Murd and, uh, into the, you know, that very beefy draft? Um, especially with, cause I, I said it even in the stream, I was like, I wonder how the Murd is going to be able to, you know, cause peeling's a big, obviously a big thing, you know, cause you have yeah. blaze and then, um, heavy for Brightwing. But then I was like, how, I wonder how Murden, you know, with a, a stun and a half, cause if you did, if you took the um, level seven, um, how, how would that work? But I mean, then again, you could also just say, why don't we just run it into them? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I think, I think for, for the most part, um, I, I like to have Verdin because he can gap close with his jump. So I can anchor from the front and then jump to the back if need be. Right. Um, it, it's really nice to have the range skill shot or the range CC off of the trap. What do you say? Ready um, to have a little fun? Or even off of like play stun. The jump stun potential is really good. So like we're always going to have a pretty well coordinated or I, I'll just say like a pretty simplistic CC chain. Right. Either I can jump stun first or we play off the trap or play stun. Um, and I think other than that, um, I, 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 I wanted Murden for, for the burn. It's nice with the level four mm -hmm. and the level 10, once you get stacked, the auto attacks. Right. So we were able to like keep our burn pretty far ahead. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like I said, like, like gap close, uh, I could have done a better job scouting towards the later fights, but like, I realistically, I can play from like one brush and we're just trying to figure out where Sonya and Chen are yeah. looking for. And then I can quickly... Uh, I can close, like I can peel back with jump and stun, or I can go on their back line and back line and create pressure. So I don't know. It felt it felt versatile. Oh I guess. yeah, versatile and, and the the range CC. And it and it looked versatile. You know, you made you watching the Murden's fluidity in that game. You know, and a lot of other games, it may be hard for a Murden to deal with a very chunky team comp. But the way that y'all were kind of forming your, you know, forming your um. It's kind of weird to say it like the forming your form essentially. You know, you were very flexible, and again, I keep saying that word is because you were either, as you're saying, back to front, back, you know, front to back, or you were sniping someone to get a finishing kill, and you know, yeah. you miraculously, you're sniping the the uh, Lucio, the most elusive character on their team. So, but overall, yeah. you know, well done. I had a great time, you know, coming out of retirement and casting um, y'all's game. I had a great time. Uh, so, the last question I'll ask you, and I always ask this, is would you like to do any shout outs? Um, not a lot. Um, just shout out my teammates. Um, they, they all did a good job today. Uh, good comms. I felt, like I said, I felt antsy the first game, but they, uh, made me feel, feel more comfortable in the second and third games. And, uh, just shout out to NGS and shout out to you for casting. I appreciate it. No problem. And I hope to see you guys again. If not, I will definitely be watching you guys from the crowd. You're an enjoyable team to watch. Um, you have some talented players. There's talented players on both teams, uh, but definitely some talented players uh, on y'all's. And it was such a exciting thing to say. I will say this too, because I don't know if Heavy heard me, but that those kerosene cleanses, my man, on them stitches was, my God, that was some proactive cleansing. I just want to call that out quickly. But other than that, Chuggy, I hope you have a great night and congratulations on your win. Yeah, thank you, man. You oh, too. Okay. Have a good night. Thanks, too. All right, everyone, you heard it here. We are going to call it a night. I see Banky is um, casting a Nexus game, so we are going to send the Choo Choo Train over there. Give him a nice raid. Thank you, everyone, who came by and supported me, um, and I hope that you guys see you again. If you guys, again, I'll lastly say, if you guys want to see me back again, or if you guys enjoyed um, having me here, feel free to you know send me a message or just say, hey, nice stuff, or feel free to subscribe to the NGS Storm Division channel. And again, I hope you guys see you soon. So we're now going to host Banky and make sure I did this right. Not take too much the rest of y'all's night. Uh, if it lets me. If not, then hopefully it does it. There we go. So we're going to send a raid over, guys. You have a good night. Take it easy and hope to see you guys in the next one. Oh, JK, I can't do it. Well, Banky's streaming. Good night, everybody.